So we're going to have a quick look at where we're going. So this is Maxwell Marina and effectively what we're going to be doing is a reverse park manoeuvre and we're going to land about here in between a couple of other yachts. And this is your typical mooring you'd see at any, uh, any Greek island marina really, isn't it? Chris? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's um, not necessarily the easiest manoeuvre, particularly if there's a bit of, uh, bit of wind blowing, is it? No, it can be quite tricky. I think it's probably one of the more, more complex uh, mooring manoeuvres that one might encounter. Yeah. Okay, All so right. we'll just turn this off so we can see properly. And we're just going to follow the instructions and make sure we've got our fenders on both sides of the boat. Okay, so not much for me to do at the moment. Just watch them working. Absolutely. So I think we were talking earlier, Chris, about knots, um, and normally um, most people use a clove hitch when they're uh, when they're tying on fenders. Although I think you know you, you can use other knots. I think that's the general preferred method, isn't it? Yes. Well, I always see that they're you know saying the clove hitch and the round turn. Round it? turn, two half hitches. Yeah. But I've I mean I've always used a clove hitch, and of course it has the advantage that once you've lowered it over, you can you can adjust it up and down. Where presumably with the round turn, you'd have to. Undo the you have whole, to pretty much untie the whole thing. Undo yeah. the whole thing, which is, um, you know, if you then find that your jetty looks a bit lower than you're expecting as you're approaching, it's a bit Absolutely, of a Absolutely, yeah, it is. It's a little bit slower, I think. Um, well, there's nothing, nothing necessarily fundamentally wrong with it. No. Uh, I think if it, as long as it's holding the fenders on and, and they don't fall off into the sea, yeah. everyone's a winner. And I suppose if you know, you know, you know the length, you've been doing it for some time, and you know that you're going to be in harbour for a while, you want something a little bit um, that's not going to come undone. Yeah. So that's one of the things yeah, with the clove hitch, you could slip, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, so I think so. we're, we're putting uh, the fenders on both sides here because we are effectively, we're going to be doing that reverse part manoeuvre in between two boats, so we want to make sure that we're well protected. Uh, and Just so now, yeah. yeah. Next. So we're going to put stern lines on because we're coming stern two. Okay, so our stern lines are on. Select reverse mode. Okay. Some, but not all skippers, like to stand in front of the wheel facing backwards when reversing. With ESO, it gives you a good view of the wheel and stern. Okay. Now reverse slowly into the marina. So this is Don't an interesting to point. Watch what your bow is doing as you turn. You can switch in and out of reverse mode to check. So, when you're standing the opposite side of the wheel to do it to reverse, you will be more in stern two between the boat nearest the marina buildings and the next boat along. Just before you come in line with that position, turn the boat tightly so you'll miss the gap and stop. Okay, so if you're facing this way, it can be quite useful because effectively you're reversing the controls. So you can just steer it as you would steer a car, really, and it's going to work the same. If you're standing the other side of the wheel, you have to sort of reverse your thinking, and Absolutely. that confuses some people. I should just say that, um, obviously, we're doing this double-handed, and I've got a, a wheel here, a Thrustmaster wheel. You don't need a wheel at all. You can use the uh, keyboard controls. In fact, in some ways, for me, who's more used to <laughs> using the keyboard, it's easier. Uh, but it's fun using the, the wheel, and we've got the pedals to operate the throttle. So we'll see how we get on. Absolutely. Okay, so first things first, <coughs> let's turn the engine on. Over to you, Chris. Now, I have to remember which way I'm going here. So Backwards. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, the that brake. one, I think. Yeah. Which is, in fact, the, the brake yeah. of the pedals, which is the one. And all we want to just make sure, yeah, as we're controlling our speed, I think that's one of the fundamental things, is making sure that we're controlling the speed if we do have a mishap when trying to moor, then the slower the speed, the less damage you're going to cause, and the more likely you are you're going to be able to get a fender in the way and, uh, and prevent anything happening at all. And we don't have any wind here really to talk about, so um, sometimes when there's a little bit more wind there, um, it's difficult to be really dead slow because you're going to be pushed around by the wind. Today it's nice and calm, the birds are flying, So this is our slot, that's where we're headed for. Start. We can always adjust if it's too early, but yeah. So okay, round we go. Just give us a quick look on that. Bow <laughs> control. No, I think we're good. Okay. Give us the uh, okay. 
slowing down. Might want to just readjust that. Yeah, we're just straightening it up, I think. So we've got <coughs> a straight run in. Remember, with the stern two mooring, we've got to put our anchor out. It needs to be sort of as central as we can to the mooring. I'm just going to go in and then I think if we come forward a little bit. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Get okay, nice and straight. Right? That looks pretty good to me, Chris. It wasn't too bad, actually, apart from it. Further than political. You have a look at the. Um, Top down view? No, I meant the front, the looking forward. Oh, okay. Well, right. you can do. Yeah, you've got quite a bit. You've got plenty of space. Slowly, and then you accelerate like Michael <laughs> Schumacher. Well, it sounded that way, but it, it was all in control, obviously. Okay, so the next thing we need to do <coughs> is drop our anchor. You can adjust your position to get in line with enough distance to lay down plenty of anchor check. When you're ready, drop the anchor, then start reversing slowly while extending the check. So we've got 1.2 meter depth. But we've also got a draft up uh, the distance from the bottom of the keel to the roller of the anchor is three metres, Chris? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Three metres. So, so what we need then... approach the jetting, stop extending the chain to check the anchor is holding. You can also check the angle of the anchor chain. Use the close-up button on the anchor menu. So, I'm going to select the anchoring menu, close-up. You can now precisely control Open your approach the to the jetty by extending the chain and using reverse throttle. Once you are close to the jetty, click on the mooring menu to moor up. Can you park close to the jetty in front? Can you just hold for a second? Yeah. Um, Sorry, that was really drifted. Yeah, yeah, just a little. I think we were just because um, we were talking well, a bit. So. We've got three metres uh, draft on the boat to, to the roller of the of the, uh, the anchor uh, fair lead. So with 1.2 underneath us, that means we need about just over 16 metres of anchor chain really to make sure that we get a good grip. <coughs> so here we go. I think so. If we drop this down, we want to make sure we get to about four metres. It should mean that the anchor is on the bottom. And then we can go back and start moving backwards slowly. What we don't want to do is drop all the chain at once because all it will do is land on top of the anchor, uh, which uh, isn't going to allow the anchor to work. It's just going to have to the anchor for us to clear up later. Okay, back we go, Chris. So as Chris is going back, we're going to be continually letting out more and more chain. Making sure that we're not dragging the anchor back until we fire that the front. About one knot, something like that, seems to work. So the other thing we can just check is actually the angle of the anchor chain. So we can see it's not it's not uh, dragging it yet. So we just keep going back. Oops. These foot pedals are quite tricky, I have to say. Yeah, I think it's a little bit getting used to it. Yeah. <coughs> so I'm going to just keep letting out the anchor chain. If you let out too much, it doesn't matter because we're going to be able to pull it back in. Not a bad thing to stop. Yeah, I think in, in some ways you can actually let the, the anchor control you. you know, we run out of anchor chain now. So. In that case, this will be interesting. I just have to see what we. <laughs> You've got to get a bit closer than that. I was thinking I was. Okay. Do you want to put it into the top floor? Yeah. Let's see. There we go. 
So we're going to come in. No, oh, yeah, too far away. Let me, um, I'm getting reverse, too excited reverse, now. Reverse, reverse, reverse. <laughs> Not too much. Here we go. So we're tying on.